ionic compounds and formula unit of such compounds. So first, basically, let us understand what ionic compounds are. We saw molecular compounds earlier, right? But ionic compounds, actually, there's a small spelling error out here. Okay. Ionic compounds are basically compounds which are made of ions. If it is as simple as this. Compounds made up of ions. Right. And what are ions? Ions are the positively or negatively charged atoms. So compounds which are made up of ions are known as ionic compounds. Right. And what are ions? Ions are either the positively or the negatively charged atom. So what happens is that in some cases, you know, and uh, basically these ionic compounds mostly are formed through a combination of metals plus non-metals. There is one exception to this, where is, which is ammonium chloride, in which case it is formed only from two non-metals, okay. But otherwise, normally ionic compounds are formed up of a metal and a non-metal. Now, coming back to the fact that, you know, what these ionic compounds are, whenever you have an ionic compound, and let's take an example of maybe uh, the most commonly used one is the sodium chloride. Okay. There are others as well, which is, let's say, potassium chloride and others. But let's talk about sodium chloride. So if you remember, the symbol of sodium is Na plus and chloride is Cl minus. This is the positively charged atom and what do we call them? We call them cations. And this is a negatively charged atom, so we call them anion. In case you don't understand these terms, you can go back to our previous video where we've dealt with these things in detail. Okay. So these different atoms, sorry, not atoms, these different ions are held together through a very strong electrostatic force. So what happens is, in order for sodium and chlorine to get together to form sodium chloride, these two are brought together by a strong electrostatic force in between. Okay, because for any compound to be there, it has to be stable. So the number of positive charge and the number of negative charge for these have to be necessarily equal. And therefore the overall charge, if you see, in case of an ionic compound is zero. Right? So the overall charge in case of a ionic compound is zero. Why? Because whatever is the number of positives here gets cancelled with the number of negatives here. Some of the other examples of ionic compounds are calcium chloride, CaCl2, okay, then you have copper sulfate and so on. There are quite a few of them. You can refer to any of your textbook to get a hang around these two, right? Now, coming back to the second thing, which is the formula unit. Now, formula unit, what does a formula unit stands for? We spoke about something as the smallest unit of a compound, which is equivalent to the molecule of that compound. What does this mean? Now, when I talk about this sodium chloride example, you know, in a sodium chloride, there might be a situation where you would have a large number of sodium and large number of chlorine ions. Okay, it need not necessarily be one. So let's say if you are talking about this much of sodium chloride, okay, it will have sodium and chlorine and the number of ions which may be present is maybe hundreds of them. When we talk about formula unit, right, we talk about a simplest combination of these two, okay, or the minimum combination of these two, which can kind of form something which is equivalent to a molecule of that compound. So let's say if I can take one ion of sodium and one ion of chlorine, okay, and these two together can form one single unit, 
okay which is sodium chloride this simplest unit is known as the formula unit right so in other words it's just like you know instead of having maybe hundreds of them the minimum quantity of each of these ions which is required to form one unit of the compound the ionic compound that is known as the formula unit right and uh, a related concept to this is also that of a formula mass now we spoke about molecular mass earlier where i told you that you know how do you compare molecular mass with respect to carbon 12 atom the formula mass is used in case of ionic compounds why because in ionic compounds you don't have atoms you have ions right so therefore a related concept to this is that of a formula mass now we studied about molecular mass earlier where we know uh, we told and we discussed that how a molecular mass is consumed or calculated in terms of atomic mass unit now written as u with respect to a carbon 12 atom but in case of ionic compound because molecules are not there okay so we don't use the word molecular mass we instead use the word formula mass and formula mass of an ionic compound is nothing but mass okay just like you know you were comparing the molecular mass you compare the relative mass of a formula unit which was this with carbon 12 atom so nothing different as such over here just that you know because there is no molecule as such present so we use the comparison of a formula unit of a particular compound with respect to carbon 12 atom and that is what the formula mass is all about so it's just a slight variation of molecular mass right in molecular mass you had a molecule of a compound so you compared the relative mass of that molecule with respect to carbon 12 atom in case of formula mass because in case of ions you don't have molecular mass but you have a formula unit so you compare the relative mass of a formula unit with the carbon 12 atom thank you for being with us